Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Uh, the purpose of this video is to uh, show how to draw what are called free body diagrams. And free body diagrams are uh, used to analyze forces mainly for purposes of applying Newton's law of motion, but also for um, their use for analyzing work terms and principles of work and energy. So an example here I want to chat about I've got this uh, trio of books we're going to imagine sitting on a desk somewhere. And I went ahead and already kind of gave them names. The top one I'm calling book one and the bottom book two and the, I'm sorry, the middle book two and the bottom one three. And basically a free body diagram is this. It's a picture of whatever system you're analyzing with all the different possible force vectors acting on it shown. Now, a very important thing to realize is that this three book system, there's a lot of different possible free bodies we could draw. And I'm going to talk about all of them here. Possibility number one, we could draw a free body of the entire system. That's this picture right here where I've got books one, two, and three, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. Other possible free bodies, we could draw a free body of only the top book, book one, and that's what this free body is going to look like. We could kind of make our cut for the system right between these two and draw a free body of the top two books and that's going to be this picture and we can also do a cut maybe here and draw a free body of the bottom two books and that's going to be uh, these, this picture right here so taking these one at a time and I'm going to start with a free body diagram of the top book so this picture right here is uh, supposed to represent kind of a side view like looking this way at this book and when we talk about forces what you have to remember is that forces can be classified as to one of two types they're what are called field forces and contact forces um, in first semester physics the only field force you typically deal with is, is the what's called the gravitational force or what you sometimes call an object's weight all other forces, at least in a first semester physics, uh, are typically created by direct physical contact between two surfaces. So when we draw a free body of this top book, the first force I'm going to put in that free body is what I'm going to call the object's weight. And I'm going to draw a force vector for it. Uh, we could just maybe call it W, or we could call it maybe uh, F sub G for what we call the gravitational force. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it W, which is supposed to represent the weight of the book. Now, <clears throat> I like to draw my force vectors uh, like I have it, but the truth is you can take this force vector and draw it anywhere along this line. This line is a special line. It's called the line of action. So I, I could have drawn it more like it's pushing on the book if I wanted to, or you can draw it anywhere in between. You can't necessarily move them around left and right, though. Gravitational forces belong at a place called the center of weight or the center of mass. Um, for now, I'll just say in the geometric center of the book, and I'll talk in more detail about center of mass in another video. So here's a force vector that represents the weight of the book. This book might be two pounds or something like that, and that would be the magnitude of this force, and the direction is down. Now, <clears throat> if this were the only force acting on this book, that book would accelerate downward. Right? It's not. It's sitting here in this nice uh, pile and that's because there's another force in between these two books acting at the surface between books one and two there's another contact force that contact force pushes down on the middle book and that force is pushing up on the uh, top of book that's an example of a force that in physics we typically call a normal force i'm going to go ahead and whoops draw it in black normal is just a you know kind of a strange word for perpendicular this force makes a right angle to the surfaces that are in contact and that's why it's called the normal force and again normal is just a you know fancy word for perpendicular or right angle now there's several different normals in this example there's a normal force between books one and two there's a normal force between books two and three there's also a normal force between book three and the surface that's supporting them. So there's three different normals here, and we have to keep them straight. Because this is the normal between book, books one and two, 
I might call it something like normal one, two for the normal between books one and two. <laughs> and that's pretty well it. This free body diagram is, is done. I'll talk a little bit now about um, if we define our system like this. And again, going back to my picture, if we define our system as the top two books. All right, so the first force I always put in is the gravitational force. In this example, I happen to call it W for weight. Now, there's two different books here. How I take that into account is up to me. I could either put two different force vectors. Um, both would have a, about the same magnitude, so I could call them W and W. Or I'm just going to put a single force vector and just label it 2W. Again, where this force vector goes vertically is up to you. It can You can put it anywhere along what's called this line of action. <clears throat> now, at this surface, between books two and three, there's another contact force. That force would be pushing down on book three, and that force push, pushes up on book two. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a force up in the free body. And I think what I'm going to do here, so that I don't overlap these, is I'm just going to move this maybe over to the side a little bit. That force vector would be up. Now that's the normal between uh, books two and three, so I might label it something like N23. You also notice that I made this vector, I tried to make it roughly twice the length of this one. And uh, same thing with this guy. And again, I'm gonna, this video is gonna be about just how to draw the free bodies. I'll write separate videos about how to write equations for them. A very important point to realize is you'll notice that I have not included any force at between those surfaces. All right. There is a normal force between surface one and surface two, but that's an example of what's called an internal force. Because of how I'm defining my system, that force is internal and will not affect the net behavior of the system. Even if I did try to include it, that normal would be up on book one and it would be down on book two. And it ends up adding to zero anyway. So we're not going to include internal forces in our free bodies. So that normal between one and two is done. third possible combination. All right, let's talk about books two and three. So now we're talking about defining our system like this, separating it off. First force I'd like to put in that free body, again, is the weight. And this time I'll go ahead and, oops, draw that force vector like so. And again, there's two of them, there's two weights. So I'll go ahead and put two W. You could also put two individual force vectors labeled W and W would be perfectly fine. And again, you'll notice this time I drew it kind of on top, more like it's pushing than pulling. These force vectors can go anywhere along their line of action. All right, surfaces in contact now, books two and three. If you look at the picture, now, although I didn't include it, it's kind of like these books are levitating here, but um, the intention is they're sitting on a table or something like that. So there's some sort of contact between the bottom of book three and that table. That contact point is going to have a force which is down on the table and up on uh, this surface right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put a force vector there for that. And that's the normal between book three and the table or whatever surface is uh, holding it up. I'll go ahead and put three T. We'll assume it's a tabletop holding them up. <clears throat> and that's what a free body of the combination of books two and three might look like. Again, you'll notice that even though there's surfaces in contact here, I'm not including any normal forces for that surface because those forces are what are called internal. They do not affect the uh, net behavior of the system. Okay, last but not least, we're going to draw a free body now of the whole, whole kit and caboodle.
First, let's talk gravitational forces. I'm going to put a force vector, except I'm going to draw it in black, for the weight of the books. Each book has a, carries a weight that I'm calling W, so I'm just going to call this 3W for uh, that force vector. I could also put three individual smaller forces labeled W, W, and W. Okay, surfaces in contact. Uh, again, there is a contact along this surface between that bottom book and the table or whatever supporting them. That's going to give us a force upward on this system. And that's the same as this force right here. Normal uh, 3T, I guess I called it. So, um, this video is just meant to be kind of an introductory video into uh, drawing free body diagrams. Again, I, just a quick little review about what a free body diagram is. It's a picture of your object or system you're analyzing with all relevant force vectors shown. Now, I say relevant force vectors because you know, if we think about all of the forces acting on this book, well, a couple of the obvious ones, it's got what we would call a weight down, which is the gravitational force of attraction between the book and the Earth. Um, it's got a surface in contact between one and two, which yields a normal, which is up. But the moon is also pulling on this book. Right? There's a gravitational force vector between that book and our moon, and between that book and the sun, and between that book and any other stars in our part of the galaxy. So, But all of those forces are so small, we, we, we couldn't even measure them typically. So we just draw the important forces. Uh, one of the most common types of forces is the normal force. You'll see a normal force between any two surfaces in contact. That force will always make a right angle to uh, the surfaces. So, hope this video helps at least be an introduction into how to draw free body diagrams. Have a great day.